حياكم to a new episode of Mr. Mwater, the Maserati Grecale. This car at its launch got a lot of criticism for its looks. Some people said it looked like a Chinese car. Some said it looks like a Macan, like a Ford Puma, like an Alfa Stelvio. But today we are not here to admire the Grecale's looks or exterior beauty. We are here to admire what lies beneath. The beauty of this car is in its Trofeo badge. This is the Grecale Trofeo, the most extreme and hardcore version of the Grecale available now. Now, aside from the performance, what changed on the Trofeo's looks? It has the same front grille, same size, but it's all blacked out now. Uh, however, the lower fascia has been revised completely. You feel it's more gaping, it's more sucking air in. It needs all that cooling for the extra performance the engine will give us. You will also see some additional carbon fiber bits all around the vehicle. And notice how these uh, sensors stick out. Now, since this is a black vehicle, it won't be as prominent, but on a different color uh, exterior paint, this might look like dental braces from how out of place it is. This carbon also repeats on the side of the Grecale. The side skirts are all finished in carbon. Now this color doesn't do the car justice because black on carbon doesn't really show. And even behind the car, you will see the entire rear end is finished in carbon fiber. It's a huge carbon fiber panel. Are those people uh, playing American football or rugby? However, the entire weave is in the same orientation or direction. I wish it was symmetrical and split in the middle where you have like the V direction for the carbon weave. Now there's no Trofeo badging from behind, so the only way to tell it's a Trofeo is from that carbon fiber and from the exhaust tips. Those are real functional tips. Uh, while they are metallic and finished in a nice way, I wish they were circular like the Levante Trofeo. I think the circular ones are more aggressive. Uh, however, Maserati, fun fact, on the spec sheet, these are labeled as quad tips. Are they quad or do you think they are singular tips? Let's listen to what they sound like. I love how there is no rev limiter on the Trofeo. It revs all the way to redline. Uh, I also believe there are no OPF filters or anything for the GCC specs. Now you will see red branding or modified branding for the Trofeo. You have red stripes. And aside from the Maserati Trident, even the Trofeo badge has a red background. Now Maserati's design language focuses on two elements. It focuses on the number three and it focuses on pointy shapes. You will see three vents on the sides. Uh, I'm hoping those are functional. Uh, they look like they have some depth to them. And you will also see uh, the number three in the front headlights, those three little illuminating side lights. The rims also, you will see how it's divided into units of three. It looks like that rident with that uh, little pointy element in the middle. The yeah. brakes or the calipers on this Trofeo have been specced in red. I think this ties up well with the badging and the other red elements. Now, what are the other pointy stuff I was referring to? Look at this pointy little detail and notice how it repeats over the front grille with this pointy element, over the rear number plate. And even inside the quad tips, you will see how it's pointy in the center. And if you look closer, you'll find this pointy element in less obvious places like the dashboard and some interior bits. Now, some people complain about the looks of the Grecale. I have found a solution to make it look better. Just lower yourself and you will see how the car looks much better. Bro, squat. What do you think? I think it transforms the look of the car. Now, this shares the same underpinning or the platform with the Alfa Romeo Stelvio. However, on the Grecale, it has been elongated to give it more rear uh, passenger room. Now, there is no actual handle. You just see a hole over here. But look how far out the window trim and the window panel extends. I feel it's going to slap me. If I were any shorter, the door might slap you. 
But before I forget, check out the key of the Grecali. Now the key comes wearing this uh, protection. However, the protection looks loose. I feel the key needs a few more inches for the protection to be the right size. But the key itself is nice metallic material. It weighs really nice. The only thing I would change is the trident in the back. I wish it were metallic or an actual material rather than a print. But let's put back the protection. Always be safe, people. Stepping into the rear space, uh, the same uh, method for the door handle. There is no physical lever. It's a button as well. Just push the button and the door opens electrically. Now, legroom is plenty. You have a lot of space. You don't feel this competes with the Macan. You feel it's more similar to the space inside the Cayenne. It's that spacious. Even headroom is plenty. You have armrests and the materials and finishing. Everything is nice and finished luxuriously. Uh, the entire armrest, even the plastic bits are all in red. And you even have the Maserati Trident on the rear seats, just like the front seats so of the rear passengers want to take nice selfies for Snapchat and they want to post stories unintentionally with their nice expensive logos, they can do that in the rear seats. Now, I think I'm sweating. The temperature outside is close to 40. But what's worse than temperature is the humidity. Uh, it's like 80%. So you'll see the door finishes. It's all leather and you have this, uh, I think you can call it uh, carbon weave. I don't think it's actual uh, carbon that has been in the oven. So this is before the process of applying the resin and all the finishing needed. While it's cheaper to make, I think this is more suitable for the temperature in the UAE. I think this will resist heat much better. Uh, the normal carbon in this heat, sometimes it bends over time. Uh, now this is similar to what you can see on like BMW E92, that generation. And you have this carbon weave for the storage space in the middle, which opens like uh, house doors and now the car welcomes you on the digital screens with the Trofeo branding and the Maserati logo. I think we're gonna die from the heat and metal. Let's switch it on. Now switching on the car happens from this beautiful steering. Honestly, everything feels expensive and luxurious inside this uh, Maserati. Even like the speakers, the finishing, uh, the metallic bits, everything feels expensive. And Maserati claims this has gained weight over the Stelvio Quadrifoglio for this reason, for the use of materials and for the technology they have added over here. In the dashboard, you have this uh, perforated or even semi perforated like it feels like it has been poked only and not fully perforated. I don't know why they haven't used the same carbon over here for variety. With that said, you can't hide the fact that this car has some American roots. It links a little bit to FCA or Stellantis, whatever their most recent name is. So you feel a few bits are um, still American. For example, this Alcantara roof, or whatever it's trying to be, feels like something you would find inside a Cadillac. It feels American. Even certain seat controls sound American. Like there is some noise when you adjust the bolsters in the seats. But what's pleasantly American is the infotainment inside the car. Now, this reminds me of what you'll find inside a Dodge or Ram products. And operating it is very nice, very smart. Uh, it's very intuitive and I like what Maserati has done with the screen and I like how it's twisted or broken into two separate directions so the lower part faces the driver even better. Now they have put the AC controls, seat controls, everything in the lower screens. Even the headlights of the car are adjusted from here. But notice how this reacts to the lights and it's a very nice color. Even the height of the vehicle is adjusted from the screen. This is the normal height, you can drop it down into aero height. Only thing I would change is the volume button. Now it reacts fast, it's easy to use. However, I would have preferred if we had like a metal scroll or something to control it manually without having to look where the touch button is and without having to smudge it that way. Not only does this screen feel like an Android screen, even this Maserati watch feels like an Android watch. You can control the content. At the moment, it's brake and power. Notice. Let's put it back to a classic clock and you can see how we can select from the different designs and the different Maserati clocks. The first time any person enters the Grecale is going to wonder where is the gear? How do you control the different drives? Uh, you don't see a physical gear lever, although you see these huge fixed pedals over here. However, the gear itself is also embedded 
in between those two screens. You have like the piano buttons, but the good thing is you only need to operate it once. Let's say we go into drive and that's it. Because once you are in gear, you don't have to click any other button. You just pull both of them to go back into neutral. And when you want to take off, you pull the plus and then you are back into drive. And I just realized you have this uh, pointy element even in the steering wheel in this place. And above the trident, you have another pointy bit. But good luck explaining to your valet driver how to operate the gear and the different elements in the car. You're going to need to spend like 30 minutes just explaining what to do. Now driving off in the Grecale Trofeo, we are still in comfort mode. The suspension copes really well with the roads. However, keep in mind Abu Dhabi is not the best place to judge a suspension system in a car because the roads are like billiard tables. So no matter how stiff or hard the suspension is, it's going to do well in Abu Dhabi. It can become firmer or softer depending on the drive mode and it will also adjust the height depending on the drive mode you're in. Now, unfortunately, the car doesn't have auto hold. Like I tried stopping completely, going really hard on the brake pedal, I almost broke it. The car doesn't hold. So if there is an auto hold embedded in the system, I'm not sure. I wish it had it. Uh, also, the system over here in the UAE, it's specced without 360 cameras. It only has a rear view camera. But what's really nice and comfortable is the lane keep and the auto steer. Not only does the car steer really well and accurate, what I like is it only needs a few fingers to touch the steering wheel to maintain the auto steer. Some cars requires you to like hug or make love to the steering wheel to maintain auto steer. In the Maserati, I think there's like an electronic sensor in the rim of the steering. And as soon as it senses your fingers, it maintains the lane keep. It knows you are holding the steering wheel. But that's not what the Trofeo is about. Trofeo is about performance. So what's the engine on this car? Now, this is something that's very controversial because Maserati says that the Netuno engine is something they have made in-house, completely in-house. And they focused a lot on the engine being in-house. Funny enough, Ferrari has their own engine, which is almost the same size, which has the same render bank angle, has the same number of cylinders and a lot of shared details and design elements in the engine. Is this coincidence? I don't know. But if it is, it's a good coincidence. And the other funny fact is the Alfa Romeo Stelvio Quadrifoglio engine is also very similar to this engine. Even if you look underneath the hood of the car, you will notice it looks almost identical to that of the Alfa Romeo. Even the gearbox is the same gearbox you find on the Alfa Romeo. It's the same ZF8 speed. And it even sounds the same when it shifts. But what a gearbox it is. That's in comfort mode, imagine. It's that loud in comfort. Now you feel a lot of body roll in the car. You can decrease it a bit by moving into sport mode. And notice how it sounds even louder now. The shift sounds are amazing. Let's speak about specs a little bit. So what's the power of this 3-liter engine? This 3-liter twin turbo engine has an output of 523 horsepower. And the torque is 620 newton meters of torque. And with that car, that size, that weight, and that gearbox, I feel everything is harmonious. Everything uh, fits together well. I don't feel you need more power. I don't feel you need a dual clutch transmission. I think the ZF works very well with this car. Especially that the ZF is lighter in weight and it's almost similar shift times. You are not gonna notice a split seconds or milliseconds difference on the road. And for such an SUV, I don't think you need a dual clutch. The car weighs a little bit over two tons. You don't really feel the weight on straights as a result of how rapid and how fast the gearbox, the transmission, and the engine is. The engine is very responsive. It's one of the sweetest engines I have tried. Like the Alfa Stelvio Quadrifoglio was my favorite, one of my favorite SUVs. And this is very close to that. This being a little bit more luxurious and probably a little bit more comfortable. Although the shifts are loud, 
the downshifts can use a little bit of bangs and crackles to make it more uh, more immature and more fun. As soon as you put it into Corsa mode, the car lowers, it goes into the aero suspension settings, it becomes firmer, all the safety systems deactivate and traction control goes off. The car even has launch control. Uh, launch control isn't as straightforward as some uh, German brands. You have to uh, pull the lever once and twice for launch control to activate. realize how well sound insulation is when you listen how loud the car is from the outside it's really loud outside I think the mic cuts off a little bit now in Corsa it handles a little bit better it still has some understeer and then the rear end kicks out and you have all the smart uh, differentials in the back all the smart systems to keep you in place. So how much does this Grecali Trophy cost? Over here in the UAE, it costs almost 450,000 dirhams. It's a little bit expensive, but for a Maserati, for the package you are getting, for all the tech and features and luxury, I think it's a good price. I just wish it had 360 cameras optioned in it. What do you guys think? Would you prefer something like this or the Alfa Romeo uh, Quadrifoglio? Let me know down below in the comments. Thanks for watching. See you in future episodes.